Here we have a size 2 digital sensor uh, shown alongside the skull of a German Shepherd, a very large uh, specimen here, a 26 centimeter shepherd skull. And often with dental radiography, um, the more challenging aspects are with larger breeds and really small breeds. The medium sized breeds are often the easiest to get pictures. So we're going to look on this very large skull at how we would get radiographs on the various teeth. So starting off on the mandible, we're going to go to the area of the mandible which is where you can see the sensor is placed all the way back and as far down as we can get in order to hopefully get the apexes here of these teeth. Now the challenge to this particular technique is not to do with any geometry or angles because everything is fairly parallel in this area. Uh, the challenge here is to keep the sensor down. On a live animal you have an elastic tissue down in the bottom of the mandible or jaw that wants to make that sensor rise upward and away from getting the apexes. So the trick here is to wedge something that is firm enough to hold the sensor down but not so hard as to hurt the animal. So basically want to wedge something in here in order to hold that sensor down. Now again because we're on the cheek teeth we put the camera around to the front in order to see what angles may be um, in use here and we can see that the teeth are about that angle and the sensor is practically parallel so the end of our cone everything here is pretty close to parallel and this would be a result of that shot as we move the sensor forward however uh, we start to get a divergence between the angle of the sensor and the angle of the teeth. So now we have the sensor approximately like this whereas the teeth are about like that. So our angle halfway between would be roughly like that. So we'll bring the cone in and the first thing we'll do is point it straight at the sensor and then we'll point it straight down at the teeth. So here we're looking directly at the sensor, directly at the teeth, and then when we split the difference we can see that we're pretty much parallel right there to that bisect. Moving to the upper arcade, we are going to go for the upper fourth carnasial and molar one and if we're lucky we might even get molar two all in the same shot this is very large we want to maximize the use of the sensor by putting this edge as close to the crowns of the teeth as possible and the other edge will be up against the palate so again because we're on the cheek teeth we're looking at we need to see the angles of these side teeth we can't see them from the side so we'll put the camera around front and then it becomes clear that this is the angle of the teeth and the sensor is at that angle so somewhere halfway is about there so again uh, same thing we point straight at the teeth and then we point straight down at the sensor so we're looking at the teeth straight at the sensor and we split the difference and we're pretty close to parallel to that line. Moving the sensor forward the angles don't really change much we still have the teeth at about that angle, the sensor about like so, and halfway between, something like that. So here we might be um, looking fairly close to the bisect. I'm a little bit off on that one as you can see. I'm actually looking more at the sensor there.
Now I have a toothpick holding this mouth open so we can look at uh, one of the largest, if not the largest, tooth in the mouth, which is the upper maxillary canines. Here would be the apex of the canine. Here would be the crown. The theoretical angle of this tooth is a straight line between the apex and crown, which would be that. However, this part of the tooth is closer to vertical, and this part is closer to horizontal. And for me, this is the main region of interest up here near the apex that we want to capture. So I would suggest bringing the x-rays straight down vertical as viewed from the side. So vertical to the muzzle as viewed from the side. Now when we put the sensor in place, in an ideal world the sensor with us being in sternal recumbency here, the sensor would normally in an ideal world be horizontal. But that's very difficult if not impossible to uh, always achieve. So we're at a bit of an angle off of horizontal like that. So here we have the apex of that canine and if we were to come down vertical as viewed from the front as well we might get that apex superimposed on some of these premolars here. So they may uh, be on the apex of that canine. So in order to separate and make sure that the premolars are not superimposed on the apex of the canine, we're going to bring the tube in at about one o'clock as viewed from the front. And what this should accomplish is that the x-rays hitting the apex here should cast the image across to the far side of the sensor and the x-rays coming through the premolars here are going to record them on the other side of the sensor. So we would then see something like this as a typical radiograph of that, this being the 204 uh, upper canine. Cool thing about this is all we have to do to get the 104 is move the sensor over to here and come in with our x-ray at about 11 o'clock. And we would uh, get the same thing on the 104. So this works fairly well for that. The incisors, the mandibular incisors on shepherds and labs tend to be relatively flat like you can see here, whereas the maxillary incisors have a steeper angle like so. Just seems to be the case with uh, boxers and pit bulls that their mandibular incisors are much closer to the same angle as the upper incisors, but not so the case on uh, shepherds and labs and so forth. So here we have the sensor at about that angle the front teeth at about that angle. So again, if we come in and we point the x-ray first straight at the teeth and then straight down at the sensor, we look at the teeth, we look straight at the sensor and split the difference. There we have it, pretty much parallel to the bisecting angle. Notice here we have a root fragment for what I believe should be the 203 incisor. And for the mandibular teeth, we have a much more acute angle. Here's a sensor, there's the teeth. The bisect would be approximately there. And there we have that. Now normally, dog this size, you're actually gonna be taking it like this. Well, here we are at the front, so we can't really see the angle of this shot. So if we look straight down from above, straight down from that angle, we then see that, again, there's the teeth, and there's the sensor, and there we are roughly parallel to that. 